The technology we're about to talk about has the power to rewrite human history. It's so mind-blowing that nuclear physicists from all corners of the globe will be diving into this to try and reverse engineer it. Say hello to Trenta, Helium's sixth generation nuclear fusion generator. But this is no ordinary fusion generator. It's in a league of its own. Taking inspiration from ion propulsion in space, Trenta flips the script and applies that knowledge to create nuclear fusion using a completely innovative approach. Buckle up because we're about to dive deep into the awesomeness that is Trenta and how it's changing the game in the world of nuclear fusion. On either end of a reactor, the generator creates two mirrored rings of plasma, which are then fired at each other consecutively in a fraction of a second, activating strong magnets that compress the rings in the center where they contact. This raises the plasma temperature to tens of millions of degrees by converting the incredible kinetic energy of the ions which are moving at a speed of 300 km per second into thermal energy. The temperature is high enough to overcome the electromagnetic attraction that keeps the ions apart, allowing them to fuse and create new atoms while simultaneously releasing enormous amounts of energy. Pretty impressive. What Hellion has accomplished here is astounding, easily starting nuclear fusion. So let's jump into it. In contrast to conventional fusion, this system's basic operation involves injecting a fusion target known as a field reverse configuration. They invented a method of merging plasmas, in which there is symmetry on both sides of the apparatus. The fusion fuel is injected into what is known as the formation section injectors. In the center, they speed it up. And when they stagnate, the kinetic energy is converted to thermal energy, which initiates the fusion reaction. The chamber is filled with neutral gas, to which a fusion fuel mix is added. The gas is then heated, creating ionization, which removes electrons to create charged plasma. Magnetic fields run the length of this entire machine to prevent material damage and keep the hot fusion fuel away from the walls. When the magnetic field is reversed, magnetic energy is trapped in a closed field, giving rise to what is known as a self-organized plasma. The plasma is then pushed towards the higher field portion by performing peristaltic acceleration on the coils after high pressure pulses. At this point, they keep the plasma moving at a million miles per hour, while also compressing it and injecting it into the primary compression center. In order to operate the turbine combined with a generator, which quickly rotates the magnetic field around the wires to generate a current, the heat is transmitted to high pressure water to make high pressure steam. The energy produced by the fusion process starts to press against the magnetic field like a piston as it happens. Hellion's electricity will be produced by the shifting magnetic field. The initial steps are skipped, so this process speeds up and improves the efficiency of energy production. The initial layer of the tokamak reactor walls will be made of beryllium, which, upon being struck by a neutron, produces two neutrons, giving us one neutron for producing tritium and one neutron for producing heat. The global supply of beryllium, however, is hardly enough to construct one tokamak generator due to its high cost. Beryllium also contains uranium impurities, making the blanket quite dangerously radioactive and increasing the cost of disposal. All of this adds up to one major issue. This is the reason why Helium uses a different fuel mixture. Their strategy is to employ deuterium and helium-3. The exceedingly uncommon helium-3 was created by fusing together two deuterium atoms, then adding another deuterium atom to helium-3 to produce helium-4. One of these advantages is extending the lifespan of the generators, as high-energy neutrons from the reaction can cause damage to the generator due to the neutron's ability to carry 80% of the reaction's energy. Therefore, they are currently developing a less expensive and more economically friendly system and they are currently constructing Polaris, their seventh generation system, which will provide power. It is anticipated that work will begin on the eighth generation in order to increase power production yield and ensure that the electricity used to recharge capacitors is converted like a 60 Hz ACK. They are also concentrating on the repetition rate and making the engineering leap from functioning every few seconds to operating numerous times per second. Astonishing, isn't it? But what is going to be the biggest challenge? The fundamental component of all the steady operating systems that they have constructed in the past is the thermal operation systems, 
in which things start to heat up and alter, including the structural mechanics of these pulse magnets and the wall temperatures. It was observed in earlier subscale systems and is anticipated to be observed in larger systems as well. As a result, understanding and predicting this phenomenon and then designing all the necessary mechanisms are thought to be the most thrilling engineering challenges, and teams have been hired to find solutions. The Trenta crew has discovered a lot of fascinating things that they never would have predicted. It's difficult to get these two high-speed pulses to align because the timing accuracy required to merge them was over a million miles per hour. What they discovered is that the theory or simple computational simulations would allow them to merge these with a lot of freedom and obtain really good results that are repeatable. However, they did discover that some of these things became a little more difficult as the plasmas heated up and exceeded 10 million degrees and reached 100 million degrees. They discovered that there were likely positive consequences in areas where they were producing more fusion. They plan to make the future systems 25% bigger than the previous ones and are going to implement them. That's amazing. Let's take a closer look at Trenta to learn more about them. One of the advantages of the Hellion system is the much smaller generation systems like Tokamak, which make aeration much easier because larger machines would be more expensive to produce and so create a much higher barrier to entry. Their seventh generation system, Polaris, is larger in size. Gyro orbits are larger than they expected, which is one of the things they found. A gyro orbit is essentially the radius at which fuel ions circle around magnetic field lines, and it depends on the temperature, which also affects the ion speed and the strength of the magnetic field. These orbits are larger than predicted by simulations, which Helion and Trenta discovered, causing the ions to strike the generator walls. In order to prepare for this discovery, Polaris is 25% larger and will be the first generation to start capturing the electricity, but it will require the most modern electronics to operate swiftly and effectively. There are countless capacitor banks underneath Trenta, and 90% of its energy is used to generate the current necessary to produce its magnetic fields. The main compression coils at the center run at 1 million amperes, while the magnets that create and propel the plasma ahead operate at 100,000 amperes. As a result, Trenta needs a mechanism to store energy and fast discharge it in order to get current. Trenta is reliant on capacitor banks since it is hard to draw that amount of current from the grid. It is amazing what Hellion is accomplishing right now. In this mechanism, fusion is brought about through a delicate electronic symphony of events. By overcoming one of the strongest forces in the universe, two plasma rings are forced into a violent collision which is then caught in a magnetic trap in the middle, where it continues to shrink until ions have nowhere else to go except to fuse, producing the new elements in a machine. Quite impressive. Hellion is just getting started. They're already putting in the hard work for the next stages of clean and safe energy for all of humanity. They've got big plans to make everything run even faster, and we're crossing our fingers that everything goes according to plan. With more teams being brought on board, working at lightning speed, and adding a new process to capture the energy of that expanding plasma and convert it into electricity. This delicate symphony of science is about to get even more complex and awe-inspiring. Brace yourselves, because world-changing electricity sources are about to hit our grids. Thank you so much for tuning in to this informative video. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. If you want to see more mind-blowing content like this, don't forget to leave a like and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all our latest discoveries. You won't want to miss what's coming next.